Welcome okay. to the Bible Balance Healthcast, episode number 431. Are you depressed? Do you have SAD, which is Seasonal Affective Disorder? BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Seasonal affective disorder is a type of depression. It's called a major depressive episode. These labels come from something called the DSM, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psych- Psychiatric Association. We're in the fifth volume, so DSM-5. And that's important <laughs> only because if you go to a counselor or psychologist, psychiatrist, physician, the physicians tend to use the labels from the ICD-10. These are all diagnostic These are all diagnostic numbers. code numbers. They give you a number for on every... Your insurance. When, you, when you get an EOB from your insurance company... It should have, a, this is your diagnosis, and this is what we pay for, or this is the issues that we're working on. And that's important to professionals. That in, in counseling, counseling with you, I'm not focused on a diagnostic label. I'm focused on hearing what you have to say, trying to understand what's going on in your life. But if I'm communicating with other professionals or with an insurance company, then they require me to use these labels that communicate a whole package of information to them without having to talk to me in detail the about it. The patient should use that too. I mean, if they say, I have SAD, that's what I write on their chart, and that's and that comes up as a number on their yeah. chart. And it's useful and it's for useful you to know so much about what's going on with them. doctor yeah. and patient exactly. and doctor and doctor. So exactly. that's But SAD is one of those diagnoses. One type. Yeah, it, it is not. A, it's a subset of major depressive disorder. And so if you are depressed, depression is one of the hardest things to fight clinically. Mm-hmm. Partly because there are, they're believed to be two causative types. You can have an internally caused depression, which is a biochemical change in your system that affects you and makes you sad and lethargic and no energy and sometimes even suicidal. That's all due to brain chemistry. The other is uh, an externally caused. Your dog dies, your wife leaves you, you get fired from your job. You don't win the lottery, whatever it is that makes you depressed. Mm -hmm. And you carry that around and it affects your day. So the the symptoms that we talk about, and in order to obtain one of these diagnostic codes, you there's there's a checklist chart. You can't just have a symptom or even two symptoms. You got to have two from class A and two from class B and one from class C or you know some other combination. But as as a clinician, if you put that label on there, you're supposed to have gone through the the checklist. So I'm going to read the labels, or I'm going to read the the different possibilities and you can think think about whether these are something that you have in the winter, Mm -hmm. not all the time. So low energy, sleeping all the time, overeating, weight gain, craving carbs all the time, not just like PMS right before a period, but craving carbs all the time and social isolation and withdrawal. Like, I don't want to go to that party. I think I'll stay home and eat. I mean, that's kind of what sleep. Uh, yeah, and SAD, yeah. and SAD, these are the things they look for to make that diagnosis. Right. However, it's so much more than that. It It's a slow progression of these things happening as the days get shorter. And on December 22nd, in the Northern Hemisphere, the days get longer again. And you start feeling better. So there are many people that take medicine mm-hmm. for SAD, and, that's, and they take it between the end of August and... And December, or the end of August and the end of January, sometimes all the way to March. Right. So those, that's usually how it's treated is with an antidepressant? Yes, SSRIs, uh, mm-hmm. because it affects the serotonin and dopamine, dopamine balance. Which is like Prozac and... Uh, and Luvox, and uh, there, there are a bunch of them, and yes. they keep changing the names <laughs> on them. Uh, but yes, the, the antidepressants, and then there are sometimes side effects with antidepressants. So if your doctor is going to prescribe that for you, you should also discuss... What are the typical side effects that mm-hmm. come with this particular one? The most mm-hmm. commonly used one for well uh, for uh, sad is well mm-hmm. uh, 
Uh, and that is because it increases serotonin and it increases dopamine, is uh-huh. that right? And it doesn't have some of the negative side effects that the other SSRIs Which are have. like sexual side effects, right. which are things that I have to Which deal makes you with. even more depressed. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And so that and that does make you more depressed. Yeah. And you just can't get up for the game because you're lethargic and tired and hungry. And or sleepy. you can't climax, which is one of the biggest things yeah. that happens with SSRIs. <laughs> you never know when it's finished. That's... <laughs> Well, I guess it could be a good thing, but um, one of the thing one of the the things that I noticed this week when I was reviewing charts was that I ha- I had a patient who just can't orgasm a female she can't orgasm but her testosterone's great and everything else is great and I was thinking maybe I should treat her with oxytocin and then I looked at her supplements mm. first I looked at her drugs she wasn't on an SSRI and I looked at five HTP which is a tryptophan antidepressant in a in a supplement form you can get it over the counter and she's taking that well that's the same it increases serotonin that's the same thing mm. that's something that actually makes you feel depressed and causes you i mean not depressed but causes you to have no orgasms at the end of intercourse so that's one of the things that we look for so yeah. that's also an antidepressant that you have so to consider. So you take those away because they're not a prescription. You don't have to consult with another no. physician. You say to her, stop taking this. Mm-hmm. Then that should, that leave, should fix it. Yeah. So I was, I was, I was, I was confused <laughs> yeah. about that, but that, but some people actually need these medications. So the best medication is Wellbutrin. So get on the best medication for SAD that doesn't cause the side effects. And, and, and don't self-diagnose. I mean, you. if you read this list of symptoms and we'll, we'll post it for both for major depression and for the subset called SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder. In order to have it, you have to meet the checklist for major depression first, then identify the the seasonal affective issues. And you have to have had that in the wintertime for at least two successive Mm -hmm. years. So it's it's a recycling because of the winter weather and the darkness. And you're more likely to get it if you're female. Uh, Four out of five people that are diagnosed with SAD are female. And you're more likely to get it the further from the equator that you live. So the further north you go, uh, the more likely it is that the dark winter, the heavy winter, is going to contribute to your mood disorder. So one of the things you have to think about, why does this happen, is because we get light through our eyes Mm -hmm. and it affects our brain. So light that is real light, like light from outside, full spectrum light from being outside, goes through your brain and stimulates serotonin and dopamine and makes you happy. So we tend to be happier in the summer than we are in the winter. It depends. Some people Although think it's there vacation. is a seasonal affective disorder that's summer. Some rare. I didn't know that. Th- it is. It can be winter seasonal affective disorder or summer seasonal affective disorder. And that disorder. has to be a different source. It's a different. It's because a, this stimulates. It's not coming from the sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. This stimulates a, a neurotransmitters, but it also. But it's more rare than the winter one. Vitamin D. And what you have to watch out for is wearing sunglasses all the time. Mm -hmm. I know that ophthalmologists want you to wear sunglasses all the time, but you have to have at least one hour of daylight in your eyes, straight in your eyes without sunglasses, without having something between you and the light. And you have, or you have to take your contacts out because they also have like a sunscreen in them. So you need to have the contacts taken to out block for an the hour. UV rays. Yeah, that's what they they do to help us not get right. cataracts. Right. So if you have contacts like I do, you have to take your contacts out for an hour of being outside. Now the other option is we have some other we have some other I- ideas to uh, and this is lots of people do this. They use light therapy. Well, there there are four things that typically are prescribed or that you can mix and mingle to try mm-hmm. to get better from sad. One you've mentioned is medicine with SSRIs. Mm-hmm. One is uh, exposure to the sun Mm -hmm. without sunscreens, blockers, glasses uh, that are coated, have that Mm -hmm. coating for UV or or contacts. Uh, So just exposure time in the sun, half an hour to an hour a day preferred if you Mm -hmm. can just get outside. The more we live inside, the more many of us have desk jobs or work in office buildings or factories where we're not out farming or exercising or what have you, the more propensity we have to acquire these mm-hmm. disorders. So the the third thing is vitamin D. Mm-hmm. You try to take vitamin D supplements. If, I mean, vitamin D comes directly from exposure to sunlight. Your body will make it. But uh, you can't be blocked. Without it the blocks. It has to be directly on your skin, directly in your eyes. Yes. 
uh, or take supplements to your diet that are vitamin D uh, pills or tablets mm-hmm. that you and can get. And it's vitamin D3. And I think that the ones that are oil rather than powder are actually absorbed and work better than uh, the oil works better than the powder. So if you have a choice, they look like little vitamin E capsules. But they little rubberized capsules as opposed to a pill or a tablet. Right. Okay. And so and I I I kind of and I give my patients five thousand units of vitamin D all the time, <laughs> orally. Just I mean they can miss it more in the summer, but they need to take it every day in the winter. But we we're going to be doing a health cast in a couple of weeks talking about vitamin D and and what we've learned is you can't get all that you need by taking supplements. You still have to have some exposure. You have to come out of your cave for a while, and you have to walk around the block. or you Just have walking to, from your house to your car, especially if you don't have a garage. That's not going to do it. That's not enough. Yeah. So, I mean, I, uh, <laughs> my husband's retired, so every day that it's not freezing cold here, right. he's outside in the sun, and he's getting his hour. Yeah. And so, I mean, he's just getting an hour of sunlight, and that makes him happy. So, so the fourth treatment strategy mm-hmm. – uh, and again, often these things are mixed and mingled. But before I do the fourth one, let's talk about light for a minute. If, if you can't get out in the sun, there are manufactured light boxes that, that they sell as a specific for treating seasonal affective disorder. Mm-hmm. And you put these in your house. Uh, you, can, they, you can travel with them. You can put them up in a hotel room or something. But they want you to sit facing it, not like staring into the light, but facing the light for a half hour or more every day. So if you're going to be in the room watching television, set the light up so that mm-hmm. if you're facing it, you can look at the TV, but get the exposure from the light. Uh, do this at home. Do this preferably in the morning when you first get up. Helps rejuvenate your energy mm-hmm. uh, and defeat the issues that you experience if you have seasonal infection. Once disorder. again, without polarized lenses and without contact yeah, yeah, lenses. Yes, yes, yes. Because you need that exposure mm-hmm. to your, through your eyes. You to have your to have brain. exposure to the light. Your body needs the light. Which is what we've we've been told not to be in the light for so long. But that's a huge issue now. And I think it, the pendulum is now swinging back because there's so many things that sunlight does for us that nothing else can. And, and the, the fourth treatment strategy is psychotherapy. Primarily what is recommended is what they call cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy. They teach you skills like thought stopping when you think, I'm bad, I'm ugly, I'm fat, I don't have any energy, I can't accomplish anything, I can't do anything. The I'm going to go to bed and sleep of negative <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, you, you have to learn how to recognize I'm, I'm in that sequence again and stop it and then move to more positive things. They, they recommend meditation, uh, they, uh, guided imagery, uh, things What's that... What's guided imagery? Guided imagery would be... Uh, and you learn to do this for yourself, but initially somebody guides you through it. But mm-hmm. you can learn to repeat it. I, I've actually made tapes for patients mm-hmm. to take home and, and mm-hmm. listen to my voice doing it until they learn to do it for themselves. Okay. But you walk them through more positive experiences in their life. Like, like I'm like, on the beach. Yeah. I'm lying in listening the sun. Listening to the waves, hear the listening seagulls. Listening to the waves and then right. doing but, but that. But you do it in a, in a more slow, methodical, deliberate way. I walk to the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I walk to the beach. Yeah. Uh, but but things that you have identified for me that you find to be positive experiences. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, I'm eating a big chocolate cake. <laughs> That's, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait, yeah. a <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's talk about this. But things that you, that, that make you feel good. I mean, mm-hmm. the, coming into your sleeping baby's room and watching mm-hmm. him sleep. And letting Mm -hmm. yourself be absorbed by those feelings of looking at that baby that you brought into this world. May now be thirty years old. Yeah, even so. But but you remember that if you're a parent, Mm -hmm. you remember those moments, and you remember Mm -hmm. how they made you feel. And it's better to be in that space mentally and emotionally Mm -hmm. than in the negative feedback loop that you were in five minutes ago. Well, the negative feedback loop uses up your serotonin and your dopamine and decreases its production, and the other increases it so it really is still chemical it's just chemical that you can you can train your brain to go into which is great because it's not drugs yes and you're recycling your brain chemistry when you do that meditation is an awesome skill to learn if you can teach yourself because it quiets you down it gets you in a still place i have some full place i have some they have been trained from childhood, when they go to church, they kneel in the aisle, mm-hmm. they sit down mm-hmm. in the pew, and they 
position themselves. It, it, what they call it is getting ready to come into the presence of God. You be still, you quiet your mind, you quiet your body, you do some deep breathing, mm -hmm. and it stills you, mm -hmm. and it turns off so many of those negative things. Mm -hmm. If you can learn to just do that, you can take a mini vacation. You know, you're stuck in traffic, and the light changes, and you aren't going anywhere. You can do that for 30 seconds or a deep minute. breathe. Instead of working yourself up, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late for a very right. important date. Yeah. I think that's a, a very important skill. And many, um, I grew up with Young Life, which mm -hmm. is a, a, a Christian uh, group of high school students. And we learned to come into the room and then we had lots of fun, talk, 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 sit down. And then we chilled yeah. because there was always someone singing. And the song and the music really yeah. shut down the noise. Well, even the, the Cub noise. Scouts, you know, they have Akela comes in and gives the little signal, and everybody gets quiet, and the kids are all running around like crazy. But the leader can call for order, <laughs> and they they teach them that's the signal to be still. I and didn't quiet. know that. Yeah, and, a lot of my patients pray in the morning or pray in the evening, and and that's their time to just re reconnect and and sit down and let the world kind of leave them, and that does give them a lot of. A lot of energy and a lot of um, and a lot of c calmness, so that they can either go to sleep or energy to go to work. Right. So those are those are things that don't cost you anything. The sun doesn't cost you anything unless you have to travel to find it. But but <laughs> yeah. I think that my theory on SAD because I have it is that the where your genes came from matters. And if right. if if my genes are half Russian, which is northern, and half Italian, but I think I've got the Italian SAD because there's a lot more sun in Italy than there is here, and it's a lot warmer at this time of year, even though the latitude's not that much different. So you could be outside. Well, one of the theories is that it's also impacted by how much melan melanin that you mm -hmm. have in your skin. Yes. So your skin tone, if you're olive complexioned or if you're pasty white, will increase your, your the pasty white will have a greater chance of having seasonal affective disorder. Because they don't get enough sunshine normally. I don't see that. Hmm. I see it that most of the dark, darker people get more of it. Okay. More SAD because they they, they were meant to have it. Now they've been transported. So they have a deficit. And they, they have, have a deficit. Yeah. And, and dark skin uh, absorbs vitamin D and sunlight less than light skin. So somebody who's light skin, white skin, goes out in the sun and they absorb more vitamin D than I, in, in half an hour than I would in five hours. And, the, and those people have to have really careful awareness and tracking of whether or not they're getting sunburned. Right. The sunburn is, it's so not it's the exposure good and to bad. the sun. <laughs> well, it's not the exposure to the sun. It's, the, it's to the point of being burned. That's right. the problem. That you, is You the have problem. to come back before you get burned. So you don't need as much sun if you're whiter skin and your genes are from a, a northern clime. Right. And, the, and you, do, you absorb more, but you don't need as much sun. To be so, to, because you weren't used to that. Yeah. So, at any rate, if you are depressed in the winter, you may, or if you just recognize, I sleep all the time. You know, the, for major depressive disorder, you, you, sleeping and eating are two of the fundamental characteristics, but you can be on either side of it. You can eat all the time, or you can just not ever eat mm -hmm. if you're depressed. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I just don't feel like eating, mm -hmm. or I crave food, and mm -hmm. I, and I just eat on. to make myself feel better. And the same thing with sleep. I mm -hmm. sleep all the time or I can't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. So it, it's the existence of the disparity from your normal pattern. But that is why when you talk to your physician and, and do not self-diagnose and self-treat and all this for any condition. But when you talk to your physician about this, they will identify if you're depressed, major depressive disorder, and then they will look for the subset, which is the seasonal affective disorder. And those are the five or six things that Kathy mentioned uh, that, that they're going to be looking for. Do you, do you suffer from this? Do you suffer from this? And you need to pay attention to it. There is hope. There are treatments. You can be better. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.